All right, let's go ahead and do another launch here. Sport Plus, foot on the brake, full throttle, 5,000 RPM. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm here today with a Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet, and I'm very excited to go over some of its features and share my driving impressions with you. Porsche has been producing the 911 since model year 1964, and the 992, this generation, introduced for 2020 model year, is the latest and greatest. Uh, it's every year and every generation, it's got a little bit bigger, a little bit softer, but I think that the 911 is still a fantastic sports car. The long history of the 911 means that Porsche has perfected the recipe. Flat six engine at the back, nothing in the front, two seats, and offering open top cabriolets like this one. And it's always been the sports car to beat. Even today, some of the strongest competitors like the Mercedes AMG GT, Jaguar F-Type are still playing catch up with the 911. Overall, the 992 911 is a very handsome car, I think especially handsome in cabriolet form, uh, but they really do keep the same lines that they've been using for so many years. Uh, the design of it is instantly recognizable as a 911, and something that helps to give the 992 a more muscular look is these rear haunches. Now, um, in the 991 generation, all, not all 911s had these wide rear haunches, only on uh, the, the 992 basically mirrors what the 991 GTS would have, which is about a 1.8 inch uh, extension to the rear fenders. But now, instead of that only being available on GTS, GT3, stuff like that, all 911 Carreras, including the base just like this, have the 1.8 inch uh, fender extension. As all premium package equipped 911s do, this one has the Porsche LED matrix headlights. They've got these very cool X-shaped uh, four daytime running lights. I think that's a, that's a really modern look. And the X-shaped daytime running lights are a really nice design cue that extends throughout the Porsche lineup. Um, something else that's very interesting on the 911 down here, it does have active grille shutters, but unlike many other cars, the grille shutters actually are these front vanes right here. Um, so these ones are movable and they, they open and close to uh, adjust the amount of cooling that's going to the, uh, or adjust the amount of airflow that's going over the front radiators here. Um, but it is not, yeah, it's definitely not typical that you'll see the AGS um, actually actuating the front vanes here. Usually they'll have a cosmetic grille and then the movable shutters behind it. So you can tell that Porsche designed the 992-911 um, from the onset planning to implement AGS. All of the new 911s do come with a staggered wheel setup. This one has 19s on the front, 20s on the back. That's the standard wheel. This is just called the Carrera uh, Carrera wheel. I think it's a fine looking wheel. Um, no, no need to spend extra money on, uh, on the bigger rims. I think these ones are a little bit more proportional to the car. Um, on the front, it's a uh, 255 section width and on the rear, it's a 295. Makes me very happy to see that Porsche is shipping these standard with a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. And that's about the best tire that you can get for everyday use on a car. Across the back in very bold uh, lettering is the Porsche script and a very cool LED light bar that does extend all the way across the back. Um, and this car also does have the sport tailpipes. Um, I think these look really very cool. It's got four black exhaust pipes. I checked in there. there is exit from the muffler to all four. So yes, technically they are real. Um, and having a black exhaust pipe is nice for a direct injected engine that's gonna leave a lot of carbon deposits. Uh, don't have to worry about keeping the chrome exhaust tips nice and shiny. Another interesting design cue on the 992 is these fins that are on the rear engine cover. Now I think that they designed these um, to bring up the feeling of an air-cooled motor, air-cooled fins, um, fins for fins for better cooling, I don't know. But actually there's another Easter egg with these uh, if, in, in terms of how many there are. So if you count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then these two make 11. And so that's the uh, Porsche's way of putting 911 on the back of this car. Now let's go ahead and pop the hood.
service flap open. Under the hood of this 911 is a classic Porsche boxer engine flat six three liters twin turbo. This one produces 379 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque. Power is sent through the Porsche Doppelkupplungsgetriebe eight-speed dual-clutch transmission to the rear wheels. All you get to see under the hood of the 911 is the coolant cap, the oil fill cap, and a couple of fans here for the intercooler. Uh, obviously, they don't expect that you're going to be doing much of your own maintenance on a modern 911. 911 scores a few points in terms of the practicality uh, compared, to the, compared to its rivals. The front trunk here, actually, I think it's a quite decent size and looks like it's just, just about right for two carry-on bags and maybe a backpack as well. Uh, no, you'll have no trouble having, taking a weekend trip in the 911. Uh, plenty, plenty of room for all your stuff. Nice little storage pocket here on this side. Keep your items from flying around in here. And then on the other side, they've got a little uh, compartment and in here you're gonna find uh, everything you need for a tire change. And this uh, actually does include some uh, tire, tire fluid that you can fill, fill the tires with because this, this car does not carry a spare. So you'll uh, pump that into your tires and hopefully that'll plug up the holes. And the cargo volume in here is large enough such that uh, Porsche is required by law in the US to provide an escape button should a child be locked in here. All right, let's go ahead and step inside and I'll start it up. Uh, starter on the left-hand side, typical Porsche. All right, I'm in the 911 and this is an extraordinary driving position. You are so low in the car and the steering wheel is right where you want it to be. And this is just one of the most well thought out and comfortable seats as well. Uh, this car has the standard sport seats. You can go for the optional sport seats plus, which are gonna add uh, bolsters that you can uh, adjust the width of the bolsters on those. Uh, of once you step up into the higher trim levels of 911, there's also a carbon bucket seat available. Um, obviously, you don't need anything like that on a base Carrera. So this is the gauge cluster of the 911. Uh, they have tried to keep it as traditional as possible. So you can have it here with the fi classic five gauges and the most important gauge of them all, the tachometer, is still an analog gauge. Everything else here, uh, of course, is digital. Uh, you can get navigation going on here, uh, G-force meter, all kinds of interesting stuff as you would expect in a modern luxury car. I really like the design of this steering wheel. It's very comfortable. The drive mode switch is easily accessible. Uh, these uh, thumb knobs here for controlling the infotainment have ex excellent feel to them. And I really like the floating design of these control stocks. They've got the four um, hex head bolts holding it in and then the floating controls here. That's re a really cool look. And of course, uh, very shiny and beautiful Porsche crest in the center. So in the center of the dash there, that's the Porsche clock that comes with the Sport Chrono package. Adds lap timing functionality. Of course, this very nice looking clock and uh, as well as launch control and the Sport Plus drive mode. The center screen is quite responsive. Um, you can scroll on it really quickly and it, and it works well. Um, menus get a little bit crazy. There's a lot, of, a lot of features in here. My one gripe with this infotainment system is that the 360 camera is not great. Uh, it's definitely a little bit blurry and warped around the sides, but it certainly gets the job done and the front and rear cameras work just fine. Uh, I really like the feel of all of the buttons. The buttons are extremely premium with a nice knurled finish on all of them. They've got some of your most important ones right here, traction control and uh, PASM, uh, that's the uh, damper control there. Uh, here's your climate controls, fan speed, temperature. Uh, this, it's a little bit controversial. Some think it looks like an electric shaver. I don't know. Uh, but in, in, in use, it's totally fine. And with paddles, 
that are as good as they are on this car, I don't find myself wanting to uh, shift uh, with a lever. So I don't really mind the shape of this. Um, as this one is the cabriolet, your roof controls are here. It's super easy. Uh, the roof comes up and up or down in only 12 seconds, and you can do it at speeds of up to 31 miles per hour. So uh, you see a stoplight ahead, you slow down, you start it going, uh, you stop, you take off, and that's and that's it, that's all it takes. So with the level of leather that's equipped on this car, we do get it on the top here. Very nice stitching, but I do think that it really does not match well at all with the fake leather that they have here coating the rest of the door. Um, and unfortunately, it also continues in the rear seat. This 911 has leather front seats, but full leather rear seats. And where the transition is very apparent is on the center tunnel here. You can see the top of the center console lid here is leather, but as you go into the back, this is fake leather and the texture is just completely different. Um, I think they could do a lot better job in matching the texture of the fake leather to the real leather. All right, I will now attempt to sit in the back seat of a 911. I'm uh, six foot one and change. I think if the roof were on here, it would be a lot more difficult to get in. All right, let's see. Uh, very tight on the hips. Not quite. I think if we had a very short person in front of me, I might be able to close this. Or maybe if I sit kind of sideways like this. No. I think the back seat of the 911 is best for uh, children and groceries. All right, let's go ahead and test out the launch control here. I'm on a bit of an incline, but uh, we should get a good sense for it. <laughs> that thing takes off. Oh my goodness. Wow. So this car with the with the PDK and the Sport Chrono package, good for zero to 60 in four seconds flat. And man, does it feel very quick. Uh, the, the way that the weight transfers back is just unlike any other car. With the, with the rear engine 911, it's just a very unique driving experience, getting on power as you come out of the corner, just getting on power at all. The way the weight transfers back is so nice and the car just hunkers down and takes off like a rocket. Uh, I think that really explains why the 911s are so extremely quick in terms of the acceleration. Four wheel drive or rear wheel drive uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, and with relatively low power compared to a bunch of supercars and they still, they still accelerate right up there with the, with the Ferraris and the McLarens. Um, and that a lot of that is due to just the decades of refinement on the rear engine platform, Porsche has really got it figured out how to transfer the weight back to the rear wheels for maximum maximum grip and maximum acceleration. Um, this It really does uh, feel more powerful than it is because of the way it tilts back and because of the way it's able to, to get that power to the ground so efficiently. The steering in this 911, it's so direct. I am supremely confident with my position on the road. And even though, yeah, it's a wide car, uh, it just, it goes exactly where you look. This, this is, I, I know it's not uh, hydraulic power steering, but this electric system from Porsche, uh, easily the best electric system I've ever used and just still provides excellent precision. Driving around with the top down you really can hear that Flex 6 engine behind us and it's not just exhaust there's a lot of turbo noises as well. Let's go ahead and open it up here. Yeah, it really sings. Wow. I mean, red line on this car, about 7,300. Peak power, 6,500. But uh, 
there's certainly no torque drop as you as you let it ring all the way out. The brake pedal is fairly stiff, but extremely linear. Uh, you can really modulate it quite easily. I mean, all of the inputs on this car, the throttle, the steering, the brakes, are just so pr precisely uh, tuned. As soon as you sit down in this car and start driving it, um, you know exactly what's going to happen when you change your inputs. The low end uh, torque from this motor is really very good. I think that if you really get on it, it can actually spool up the turbos down below 2000 RPM and then uh, carry the boost all the way out to the top. You know, considering that the major difference between this base Carrera motor and the Carrera S is really in the engine calibration, uh, it certainly does not feel like this motor just dies out at the top end. Uh, it doesn't feel choked off at all. And if you told me this was uh, the Carrera S, I would believe you. I mean, the Carrera S really just adds power everywhere. And it's not like they just cap it off at the top for the base Carrera. This Porsche PDK uh, is really something else. This is, this, is, this is a transmission like no other. And uh, the, whether you're letting it choose the gears for you or you're using the paddles yourself, which I might add are very good, uh, very good feel and extremely quick to respond. Yeah, these are, this is really the best, uh, pretty much the best transmission you can buy. The Porsche Doppelkupplungsgetriebe. It's really, it's really something else and it's on another level. Those shifts from the PDK are just extraordinary. And if you let this thing sing out as high as it wants to go, you'll end up 181 miles an hour in the Cabrio here. Just one mile an hour less than the uh, coupe for the, for the standard Carrera. So I've mostly left the PASM in the normal mode. You can switch it over to sport and yeah, it gets a little firmer, but I'm not on the I'm not on the smoothest of roads here and uh, having a little more compliance certainly isn't a problem and it helps I think it helps a little bit with the weight transfer as well um, I mean Porsche has set up this car to handle extremely well whether you have it in normal mode or sport mode uh, I mean I, I really think that the normal mode is just fine the ride quality still is not uh, ultra luxurious in the normal mode. I know uh, I know they say that every with every generation of 911 it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit softer but this is I mean there's nothing cushy about the ride of this car. I mean it is still very much uh, sport oriented that's for sure but absolutely it's uh, livable on an everyday basis. There is a reason why all sports cars must be compared to the 911. And that's simply because it's extraordinary. It's an amazing car to drive whose focus on handling and performance has not detracted at all from its everyday usability. It makes an excellent daily driver that is also capable on a curvy mountain road. Obviously, the 911 is quite expensive, but there's nothing that comes close for less. If you've always dreamed about the ultimate sports car, I can tell you it genuinely deserves the title. The 911 is the real deal what every sports car aspires to be.